Nigeria, a nation of beauty and complexity, faces many internal security challenges. Law enforcement agencies work tirelessly from Lagos to the countryside to maintain law and order. But social crises and conflicts simmer just below the surface, threatening to erupt at any moment. The university is a citadel of knowledge and a foundation where solutions are sought for society's toughest challenges. The university is built to tackle problems affecting society, governance and institutions through research. When the 22nd Indigenous Inspector General of Police, Ulukayodi Adulu Egbetoku, NPM PhD, was invited to share his expertise on the Nigeria Police Force and internal security, it was a perfect fit. With his wealth of experience and knowledge, the IGP was the ideal person to deliver the annual personality lecture organized by the Ted Fund Center at the University of Ibadan. As one of the primary law enforcement agencies in the country, the Nigerian Police Force plays a pivotal role in safeguarding the lives and property of Nigerian citizens, maintaining law and order, and upholding the rule of law, especially during time of crisis. This presentation explores the responsibilities of the Nigerian Police Force, the complex security challenges facing it. There are multiple agencies involved in the management of internal security in Nigeria. However, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria makes the Nigerian Police Force the lead agency. In this presentation, we will be looking at how well the Nigerian police has been performing its role as a lead agency in internal security in Nigeria, highlighting both its achievements and significant factors limiting its ability to respond effectively to crisis situations in Nigeria. Those factors that are significantly limiting the ability of the police have been identified in this paper and initiatives of the present police leadership to enhance the operational capability of the police and reposition the police force for effective service delivery are also discussed in this paper. By interrogating the past, contextualizing the present, and envisioning the future, this paper intends to contribute to the ongoing discourse on internal security governance in Nigeria. The university community gathered to hear the IGP's insights on the Nigeria Police Force's efforts to combat internal security challenges. According to Campbell 2021, a crisis situation refers to a time of intense difficulty, danger or uncertainty that threatens the stability, safety or well-being of individuals, communities or nations. By this definition of Campbell, we can see that so many situations will qualify as crisis situation in Nigeria. It can be political, it can also be religion, it can as well be socio-economic, socio-political, and ethno-religion. Examples of social crisis is the Boko Haram insurgency that has led to loss of many lives and displacement of millions of people in the northeast of Nigeria. The farmer headers crisis is another example of social crisis that we have in Nigeria. The conflict between the nomadic pastoralists and the farming communities is a deadly conflict that has also given rise to other forms of crisis, like the armed banditry that we have now. Political crisis, example, the post-election violence of 2011. Of course, we know that every presidential election in Nigeria is followed by violent protests. The 2011 post-election violence led to a decline in economic activities and a decrease in investors' confidence in Nigeria. Terrorism and insurgency have become all too familiar foes, testing the metal of the Nigeria police force, the military, and the resilience of the Nigerian people. Overview of internal security challenges in Nigeria. We have petty crimes in Nigeria. We have terrorism. 
we have ethno-religious conflicts, we have electoral violence, we have insurgency, and we have organized crime. Let me talk about petty crimes. Petty crimes are those simple crimes that the punishment, which attract punishment of not more than six months imprisonment. They are those small crimes that we often overlook. But these petty crimes has become a challenge to us in Nigeria. Why? Because the big criminals today also started small. So if you don't pay attention to these small crimes, we are breeding problems for ourselves. So those small crimes have become a challenge. We have our young people committing stealing, petty stealing, assaults, disobedience to order, lawful orders, and all of that. We have to pay attention to this thing. And this thing starts from the home. Our parents have to play their roles as parents to give good guidance to their children. Terrorism. The Global Terrorism Index 2023 puts Nigeria on eighth position out of 10 countries that were studied. 10 countries with the highest level of terrorism in the world. Nigeria was placed on the eighth position by the Global Terrorism Index 2023. The Global Peace Index placed Nigeria on the 144th position out of 163 countries for countries that are most peaceful in the world. So Nigeria is 144. This is a very serious challenge. And these challenges are there because of the presence of several militant groups in Nigeria. We have the Islamic State of West African Province, ISWAP, operating in the Northeast, extending to Northwest. We have the Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast, which has led to displacement of 3.6 million people, out of which 1.9 million are from one state, Borono State. We also have the, uh, the insurgent group in the Southeast, called the Indigenous People of Biafra, IPO. Their activities has led to loss of many lives and destruction of properties. Terrorism in Nigeria was at its peak in 2015 and has since been declining. Decrease of 23% rate in 2023, according to the Global Terrorism Index. But we can observe that within 2023 and 2024, there have been significant efforts to curb terrorism in Nigeria, leading to a remarkable reduction in terrorism. I'm very confident that by the time the Global Terrorism Index will be publishing for 2024, the result for Nigeria will be far better. The IGP's lecture goes beyond the surface, delving into the factors driving these crises, corruption, ethno-religious divisions, and the far-reaching consequences for a nation struggling to find peace. Factors contributing to the exacerbation of crisis in Nigeria. We have corruption, resource constraints, political interference, ethno-religious divides, and insurgent movements. I'll just talk about corruption. Corruption, someone said that we have to kill corruption, otherwise corruption will kill us. Corruption has become a monster in our country, affecting public financing, affecting business activities, causing poor delivery of service, causing poor infrastructure that we have, and in fact, retarding our economic growth and development. Corruption affects everything. If we must, we must progress in Nigeria, we must move forward, we have to address this issue of corruption. Resource constraint is another factor that is exacerbating crisis in Nigeria. People compete for the small available resources. That leads to crisis. We have political interference. You have politicians everywhere only fighting for their political interest at the expense of national interest. We have to watch it. We have cases of ethnic tension and religious tensions in our different communities. 
In the early 2000s, there was the ethnic crisis in Kaduna that led to hundreds of deaths. In fact, it was ethno-religious crisis because it started as ethnic, it later became religious. It became a fight between the Christian communities and the Muslim communities. Hundreds of lives were lost in that crisis. Ethnicity, ethnicism, and religious are also factors that is driving crisis in Nigeria. We also have the movement of insurgents. We have bandits operating in the Northwest and North Central, now wanting to extend to other regions of, of the country. The security forces are doing their best, deploying all resources to make sure that pressure is put on these bandits so that they will have to surrender. In a comprehensive lecture, the Inspector General of Police, Olukayo Diagbetokun, delves into the intricacies of internal security in Nigeria. The paper explores the complex web of internal security challenges facing Nigeria and how the brave men and women in the security forces are working assiduously to keep their country safe. Internal security challenges lead to loss of lives and property, displacement of communities, economic destruction, human rights violation, social cohesion breakdown. All these challenges have serious negative effect on national development. They eroded the ability of government to provide essential services to the public. They undermine the trust of citizens in public institutions. They hampered economic growth and development and aggravated poverty and deprivations. This condition creates a vicious circle of instability and worsening standard of living that combine to sustain conflicts and underdevelopment in Nigeria. The Nigerian police force is tasked with enforcing the law, maintaining public order, and preventing and investigating crimes. It is responsible for ensuring the security and safety of citizens, communities, and critical infrastructure across the country. The MPF engages in proactive measures to prevent criminal activities, including patrols, surveillance, and community engagement. During crises, such as insurgencies or communal conflicts, the MPF is deployed to restore law and order and protect lives and property. The MPF collaborates with other security agencies, government institutions, and communities to address security challenges and promote peace. The MPF implements community policing initiatives to foster collaboration, trust, and communication between police and local communities in addressing security challenges. It adapts its strategies and tactics to respond to evolving security threats such as cybercrime, terrorism, and transnational organized crime. The Nigerian police force over the years has developed capabilities to respond to all kinds of crimes and criminalities in Nigeria. And we continue to enhance our capabilities. Recently, we established the Cybercrime Center. In fact, we have one of the best cybercrime centers in Africa today. Our cybercrime unit has been doing so well engaging in successful operations, some of them jointly with other police forces all over the world. We have conducted operations, joint operations with the FBI, with the South Korea police, with the Japan National Police, and with Interpol, with Europol, and with all other police forces. We have developed capability to monitor the cyber space in Nigeria. Recently, there was a report of system interference by one of the payment platforms, and our cybercrime unit responded. That interference, that system glitch, led to loss of over 50 billion naira. But those criminals, cyber criminals, were arrested, with eight of them already convicted, and recovery of several billions of naira for this.
He focuses on the Nigeria Police Force and other security agencies' multifaceted efforts to combat terrorism, insurgency, and cybercrime, providing a holistic view of the challenges and strategies. We're also responding to the issues of violent crimes in Nigeria, especially banditry and kidnapping, that has become so worrisome in our country. We recently established the Special Intervention Squad to fight all kinds of violent crimes in Nigeria. In January of this year, there were reports of kidnapping and banditry activities in the suburb of the FCT. Then the SIS was immediately launched and deployed to face this challenge. Within a week of its deployment in FCT, the SIS arrested 63 of the bandits and kidnappers and rescued over a hundred kidnapped victims and recover a number of weapons from the bandits. And that is why you don't hear of kidnapping around FCT again. We are going to sustain these efforts. We are going to establish the SIS in all states of the Federation. And the criminals will no longer have a hiding space. We have also developed our intelligence unit. We recently upgraded our intelligence bureau to intelligence department. Our intelligence unit has now attained the status of a department in the police headed by Deputy Inspector General of Police. We also upgraded the, our intelligence units in all the state commands. They were now headed by Assistant Commissioners of Police. We will continue to develop more capabilities. Recently, we activated the intelligence school in Share. This is because we believe in intelligence-led policing. Modern policing is community-based. It is intelligence-led, and it is technology-driven. The paper also discusses the challenges and triumphs of the Nigeria Police Force in maintaining law and order and explores strategies for enhanced security governance in Nigeria. Emerging challenges has challenged us to develop more capabilities. Before now, we had few drones, but now we are establishing a full drone system in the police such that we'll be able to see everywhere in Nigeria. All criminals, as they are committing their crime, will be seeing them from our offices. We will follow them until we're able to pick them. The ungoverned spaces, the ungoverned forest, will soon become governed with technology. Our ambition is to be able to see the forest, see those bandits hiding in the forest. We'll be seeing them from our offices. As they are coming out, we are seeing them. Whatever they do, we see them and we follow them. That is what we plan to do in future. And the future is actually here. The security landscape in Nigeria is complex and diverse marked with a range of challenges requiring multi-dimensional responses. We know we cannot do it all alone as an agency. That is why we are collaborating with other security agencies. We are collaborating with the military. We are working with all other agencies, the NSADC, the immigration, the road safety, the correctional service, the forest guards, in fact, all government agencies are our partners. All stakeholders are our partners. We are prioritizing community engagement. We are involving members of the community in the policing of their communities. And that's what we call the community policing. And our approach to community policing is changing. We are concentrating on policing diverse communities taking into consideration 
the peculiarities of each communities. That's when we get the full meaning of community policing. And the reforms aimed at improving the capabilities of the Nigeria police force. Effectiveness of the Nigerian police force in managing internal security. The following studies have revealed tremendous role of the Nigeria police force in managing security threats and crises. Successes in crime reduction through targeted policing strategies in Lagos State by Akinlabi 2017. Adewuyan Olorunfemi 2016. Insights from Ondo State highlighting efforts to maintain law and order. Efforts in crime control in Benue State, noting progress by the Nigerian Police Force by Akwadu and Ihonopi, 2017. Ogunbade and Oye, 2020, in their study revealed overall effectiveness assessment, acknowledging efforts despite challenges. Okuleye and Abolishade, 2016, indicated a mixed public perceptions but recognition of the Nigerian police force role in combating crime. Some of the challenges facing the Nigerian police, they are obvious to us. We have manpower shortage. We have a situation where one policeman does the job of two, three policemen. There is acute shortage of manpower in the police, but thank God for the Mr. President that we have. Mr. President has approved our yearly increase of 10,000 to 30,000. We are presently recruiting 10,000. After the recruitment of this 10,000, we are going to the full implementation of presidential approval of 30,000 recruitment yearly. So the manpower shortage in the police is already been addressed and is going to be a thing of the past very soon. We have the problem of funding. We have inadequate equipment. That also is being addressed. We have the issue of public distrust. The public distrust may flow from the perception of members of the public of the police. The problem is that if one policeman engages in something that is not professional. The public tends to see the behavior of that policeman as representing the behavior of the Nigerian police force. That is not true. That is actually not true. The police force is a disciplined organization. Majority of the members are trained and they are disciplined officers. The strength of the Nigerian police today is over 300,000. So we cannot expect 300,000 people to behave the same way. Some of them will behave outside the general rule, outside the general pattern, some of them. So those ones that you see with gross misconduct in public, those are the few ones. And we are dealing with it. We are not sparing them. Thank you. This in-depth analysis offers a nuanced perspective on the security challenges in Nigeria. Fighters. Promoting security consciousness.